Amazing Defender Report with your host, Travis Listening pleasure, the Blazing Defender Report with your host Travis to a very special edition of the Blazing Defender Report. What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Travis Jones. Thank you for joining me on Saturday night. Guys, I have the treat of all treats for you. You thought Halloween was over. Well, it ain't, brothers. I got somebody just for you guys and for me. I ain't going to lie. Huge fan here. I have the creator of DC Black Label's The Last God, the creator of the Suns, or, or soon-to-be Netflix movie starring Peter Dinklage, produced by Matt Reeves. Yeah, Batman's Matt Reeves. The Last Sons of America coming to Netflix very soon. The Eisner Award-nominated comic writer Philip Kennedy Johnson. Philip, welcome to the report, brother. Thank you. Dude, thank you so much, Travis. It's awesome to be here. Man, uh, you just came from a signing in Knoxville. Is that right? I did, yeah. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee tonight. Wow, man. So, I, I mean, tell me how those go. Like, do you just, I mean, are they cool? I mean, I'm sure it's a long day, right? It's super cool. No, I love it. It's um, So, I'm on the road right now, um, and I, uh, I knew it was going to be in Knoxville tonight and uh, or today. And um, looked it up and saw, uh, found a really cool shop called Comics Exchange that um, had a lot of good things going on. It seemed like they had a really solid comics community. Yeah. Um, I want to come out and meet some fans, you know. So I, um, I called them up and see if they wanted to do something. And then they were all over it and had me out. And I just, people came out and had their, had their copies of Last God and Marvel Zombies with them. And a lot of my older stuff too, which was super yeah. cool. I didn't know that was going to be the case. And uh, yeah, I met a lot of cool people. So I, I, I did that uh, last week too in Houston. I had a couple, I was in Houston for, uh, um, so I, the reason I'm on tour is that I, I play trumpet with one of the, the army bands in Washington, DC. I'm with the army field band that tours a lot. Right. And sometimes if there's a day where it works out, I'll take a few hours and, you know, meet some fans for my comic work. Awesome, um, man. That's awesome. Hey, and, very, and so close to, to veterans day. I want to thank you for your service, brother. Thank you oh, so yeah, much. Man for what you do. Oh, dude, it's uh, an honor. Thank you for yours, you know? Oh, yeah, well, thanks. Uh, I, you know, I, it, I'm sure you're the same way I am. You know, I, I get that a lot, like, especially the the house I'm at now. Uh, the community's very, very fire-friendly, I guess I should mm -hmm. say, uh, uh, compared to where I was. And it's like every day we're at the store, someone thanks me. And it, it feels so weird. You know what I mean? I'm sure you're the same way. It's like, hey, you know, I chose this. I, I, I'm proud to do it. You know, I, I don't need your thanks. It's always welcomed, but it just always makes me feel really weird. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it really is an honor to do it. So it's, right. um, you know, right. but yeah, no, Knoxville was awesome. It's, it's uh, just did a few hours at a comics exchange, met some super cool people. And um, yeah, looking forward to the next one. Next week, I'm, I'm going to be uh, back home in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. I'm doing some signings at Third Eye Comics. That's bang and store um that is uh my home store i'm do doing that one and i'm doing uh midtown comics as well in uh, new york city 
And um, actually, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods here in a few weeks at Great Escape, a place that was like a my snow where I was growing up. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. I was just about to say that you're going to be here November 30th. Is that correct? Right. That's Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great Escape, man. That's whenever I did something good, which was not very often, mind you, my dad, that's where he would take me. Uh, and I could get like maybe like one or two, if I was really good, I could get like three comics at a time, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, I, the, the, my listeners, they know my dad was reading comic books to me before I could read, uh, you know, jo uh, Chris Claremont's X-Men. Um, mm -hmm. and it, you know, that's the reason Wolverine was, was one of my favorite. He still is one of my favorites. He's always close to my heart, but sure. uh, yeah, great escape is, is a fantastic place, which I was in there the other day looking for, the Last God variant cover, uh, oh, which, dude, dude, it's so dope. I'm like, I got to find this. So I went in there. There's the only place in town I hadn't been yet. I went in there. They had it. And then I seen the sign, and I you know, I sent you the picture. I'm like, dude, you're coming back home. That's yeah, awesome. I'm a shit at it. I, have told, I completely forgot to let you know, man. <laughs> no, it's fine, man. No, it was actually a pleasant surprise, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, we definitely need to get together when you come to town. I would love to love to do that. Love to hook up with you. Uh, but real quick, when you were talking about you know meeting the fans and stuff, I have to tell the guy. I have to tell you guys a story. So uh, the last time, well, I don't know if it was the last time you were to Great Escape, but for it was for Warlords of the Appalachia. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I think so, it probably was the last time I was there. It's been a while. Uh, okay, so it has been that long. 2016, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Or. Yeah, it must have been that. It was probably that Christmas, right? It was. It was. Yeah, that would have been 2016 then. Yeah, because um, I, you know, I, you know, I was a, a huge fan of Warlords. Lo still to this day, I love that book. You, you guys know. I, I think I gave it pick of the week that week. That number one came out, and there it is, right there beside us. Um, so I, I, you know, I seen where you go at the Great Escape. I'm like, holy shit! And it was actually right down from my firehouse, but it's kind of like in the next district. And I drive, we drive a Quint. It's huge, huge piece of equipment. It's so hard to park that thing on Barstown Road in the Highlands area. So I didn't want to drag my guys out. So I tweeted Phil and I said, hey, man, when you're done, come by the firehouse on Dutchman's and Taylorsville and give me my autograph copy. Well, of course, you know, I'm full of shit. You guys know this. And I'm thinking, ah, he's, you know, he'll, it's not going to happen. And then the doorbell rings. They're like, hey, man, there's a dude out here to see you. And, yes, <laughs> Philip was there. It's, it signed it to the Blazing Defender. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was so awesome. So you are, you know, some guys talk to talk, but you obviously walk it uh, with with the, the fan interaction. What, what does that mean to you exactly? Um, it, Man, it's just so important to – I don't know. Like I, you hear these stories about a creator that gets has been doing it forever and gets jaded and kind of gives a kid a bad experience or a, or an older fan or whatever. Yeah, and I just hate that, man. Like it's so important to like they they meet somebody that might even be their hero or that wrote something that really means something to them. Sure. I feel like it's just so important to to back that up. You know, like you you've got to you have an opportunity to really to do something that's soup for us. For a creator to go and like shake someone's hand and just just be nice for a minute takes like nothing, you know, and it can right. it can give them an experience that they'll always remember. And it's why not do that, you know? Like so I yeah, I do take the okay, like the other day we did a um through DC social media, we did a um uh, an AMA on Reddit uh, and ask me anything, um, which I'd never done before, where you just get on there. I don't know if you know what that is, but you get on yeah. there and you just okay. So I I never seen one before until I was told about this and then I started checking out some of the ones that, I, that were on there um, and just took questions for what was supposed to be an hour, but it ended up being two hours because I just, I just don't want to not answer a question, you know, like I, sure. we still didn't get to all of them, but um, I know those interactions really mean something to me because I remember being that guy, you know, I mean, sure. being that, being that kid where I was like, Oh my God, I'm about to meet so-and-so. And, you know, I'm not on a level yet where it's not like, I'm not Chris Claremont, you know, like I'm, I'm still right. like pretty new at this, but I, I'm trying to tell meaningful stories. And if something, if somebody tells me the story means something to them, that matters to me a lot. Right. Um, so, and for you, for you to ask me to do that, I mean, I didn't see that there was much of a choice there. Like I, you know, I was super happy to do it. And if a, if a, 
when a fan asks me a question, especially a question, I get the questions I get most often are like, what's it like, you know, building this world or some, some really big, broad question sure. that takes forever to answer. Or how do I, how does you break into comics or something that it's like a, a big answer. Yeah. Um, I just feel like you've got to answer those questions, even if it takes you a long time. Like it's those, you have the chance to really make a, make a difference in somebody's life, you know? Sure. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, it's, it's all about fans. Uh, one of the other shows I do is I uh, meet heads on movies and uh, it, it's, it's my buddy, Sam, uh, who's a, who's a very large individual. He's uh you know, he's probably six, six, probably goes around two sixty. Uh, so when he and I, uh, or at comic conventions, uh, we're, it, we kind of stick out. I was so, going to say, for you to say this guy's get big, like you're one of the most Jack dudes I think I know. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is, uh, you know, he makes me look small. He really does. Um, okay. but, but you know, he, we just met Kevin Eastman at a show in oh, Lexington. Cool. Oh, it was so cool. Uh, and that dude, I mean, and that's, I was telling my wife, I'm like, this guy sold the Ninja Turtles to Nickelodeon. He doesn't have to go to comic conventions. He goes to comic conventions because, like you, he, he loves that fan interaction. And if you had any doubt, all you got to do is go meet Kevin Eastman. And my buddy Sam, who is a huge Ninja Turtles fan, he, you know, he bought like 12 autographs. He had all this stuff signed. Kevin was signing stuff that, you know, Sam didn't even buy autographs for. Like, you know, because Kevin knew he was a fan and was like, oh, no, no, man, give me that. I'll sign it. You know, I mean, like he didn't care. Uh, now, there is a flip side to that where we have met creators and, dare I say, legends in this industry that were not cool at all. Like, so <laughs> not cool. Uh, there may have been words spoken actually at certain conventions. So oh, it's like, dude, you, you're that a, sucks, right? Oh my God. It's, it's like, I see this guy, this just my, my fans know who I'm talking about. Uh, this guy did a tribute to himself. Like he did a cover <laughs> tribute to himself. Like he redid past covers that he did. <laughs> I don't know who does that. But this dude, if you know him and if you've seen him at cons, you know exactly who who, I, who I'm talking about. I mean, this guy, it blows me away. And, and, and so many other creators we have met uh, have had run-ins with this guy, and they have said the same things, which is just blow, totally blows my mind. Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, we've met those dudes. Those dudes are fantastic. I will support guys that I, I like and I think are just good people. Even if I don't really like their work uh, mm -hmm. or what they did, I ain't going to say their work, but like uh, like Scott Snyder has done a couple of things I really didn't care for, but mm -hmm. I still support him because I think he's just a really good dude. Yes, uh, yeah. And that was one of the reasons I wanted you on the show because, uh, you know, like I said, th th what you did for me that day at the firehouse I mean, I'm I'm a fan for life, uh, yeah. but Thanks, I'm dude. a fan not not just because of that, but because your stories are so avant garde. There there there's nothing else out there like it that I I feel. Warlords was one, Sons was uh, that was incredible, man. I have to ask you about that. What where did that where did that idea come from? Because that is, man, that's an original take. Thanks, dude. Well, so you know, last time's America. Yes. Um, that the uh, the kernel of the idea for that came actually in 2010. And you remember when there was this huge earthquake in Haiti that yes. year? Yes. And it was really bad. It was on the news, and um, people were dying. And the families were getting split up, and there was a. Um, Sorry, for the, for the listeners who don't know that book, uh, Last Sons of America is about a world in which Americans can't have kids anymore. Um, and around the world, that makes kids like money. It's basically because Americans still need families. And so it basically makes human trafficking legit. From that point on, uh, American companies set up shop in poor places around the world and buy, barter, or steal kids to ship back here to, for adoption. Basically, it just makes this, um, makes yeah, tr human trafficking becomes the, the way the world um, so, so sorry. So flashback. So 2010 Haiti earthquake there, um, there was a, 
a church group from the States that went down there to ostensibly to, to find orphans who kids who were orphaned by this event and try to find families for them in the States. And, um, but they ended up taking a lot of kids that had families. Um, like I can't remember how many, I want to say in the neighborhood of 20 people, 20 kids oh, wow. and smuggled them out into the Philippines or tried to, I got busted and it just kind of got me. I was already doing a lot of anti-human trafficking work in the Baltimore area around that time. Sure. But I wasn't really thinking about it in terms of the for-profit adoption industry. And I started doing a lot of research into that. And I just found out how messed up it was and how, I mean, there's almost nothing in that book that's made up. It sounds like a sci-fi genre sure. take on, you know, but really only the setup is even made up. There's, I mean, there's people that just straight up like sell their kids for a couple hundred bucks because they already have too many or they're too poor. They just need the money or whatever. Right. Um, they sell their kids to orphanages and the orphanages sell them, like flip them <laughs> to, uh, adoption agencies wow. and sometimes they come out of there sometimes they come to the states or wherever they're going with stories about like oh their parents died in a fire or whatever right and sometimes that's all bullshit and actually they just sold them wow. um so it's it's rough i mean but there's there's people here that need families too so it's this really complicated issue um and that's well, where that all kind of came from and at the same time uh, at the time my wife and i were having a hard time um having kids and it was starting to look like it wasn't going to happen for us. And um, so that was all kind of around, happened around the same time too. Um, so was it, were you guys thinking, thinking about adoption if you couldn't have kids? Was that a, was that on the table? I mean, I don't want to get personal. Yeah. Again, but yeah. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. We, I honestly, yeah. I can't remember. It's, it's, we were exploring all options Sure. to include having, you know, adopting or not having kids ever or whatever, you know, it was all kind of on the table. We just didn't know what was going to happen. Right. Um, so when the Haiti thing happened and I heard about that, these, all these different ideas just kind of congealed in my head. And I had this idea of a world in which other places had kids and we had none. And right. what would you do? Right. You know? it, and what's cool about that is you're exactly right. And I, the whole time I was reading, I'm like, dude, this is, this is just human tracking trafficking to the, you know, the ninth degree, you know what right. I mean? Um, but you, but you still, you're able to interject, uh, c comedy. You, there's still a light side, even though the, the, the tale is dark, it's still a dark tale, but, uh, the, the little girl, I can't remember her name, but, uh, no, Sarah, she, yeah. What is it? Sarah. Sarah. Okay. So Sarah uh, obviously is, uh, speak Spanish. She doesn't speak any English other than star Wars quotes, <laughs> right? <laughs> which is fucking fantastic man i love like when she's like it's a trap and his brother's looking around like what What do you mean what do you mean it's a trap she was like it's a trap you know and he was like oh and then he gets it dude that was that's fantastic um oh, thanks dude oh i loved it i loved it so I, I need to ask you because this has been optioned by netflix to be a netflix movie uh mm. with peter dinklage attached and if you read the comic, which I, it's four issues, guys, you got to check it out. It's four issues. Um, the the character looks is drawn, illustrated, just like Peter Dinklage. Was this somebody that you always had in mind? Because when he speaks his dialogue, I can see Peter Dinklage playing this part to a T. Right. Yeah. It's honestly my at first, uh, the first iteration of Julian, that character was actually much less physically capable than uh, than he ended up being in the story that came out. Um, he was going to be somebody who was completely physically reliant on his brother, like completely. I mean, he's, he still kind, he still is sort of in the sure. book, but not like he was going to be like he was because he's the, the moral compass. He's the brains. He's the more capable brother in the in, in the, with you know brains and ethics in um, all the ways that matter. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then his, his brother is the good looking one, like the right. tall one who kind of opens doors and ties shoes. Um, so yeah, I wanted that, I wanted that relationship. I wanted them to basically make up a whole person together just barely, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But as we, but then uh, the artist kind of had other ideas and we played around with it some more and it making him still reliant on his brother, Jackie, but also making him a little more capable than he was gave us a lot of opportunities to do cool like physical stuff that we couldn't have done otherwise. Like if, sure. if Jackie was the only one that could actually really move around. Right. Um, that would have made, would have made some real challenges in the story that we kind of sidetracked, sidestepped by um, 
making him, you know, he still, he still looks, he's not just like Dinklage in the book. He is, he's also kind of handy guy. He's got one arm that's not really usable. Right. Um, you know, he needs him to open doors and stuff, but it's, um, anyway, yeah. So there's a, there's an opera singer from, I want to say Germany or Austria. I can't remember his name anymore. At the time I was listening to him. Um, and, uh, he is, he's quite handicapped. He's got, he can't really use either arm and he's much smaller and, uh, he's got this amazing voice and he does roles like on stage, but, um, wow. or at least was at the time. I don't, I'm not, I hadn't followed his career lately, but that was more the, uh, the idea for the, for Julian initially. And then we ended up making him more like, more like Dinklage and, uh, making him more physically capable. Yeah. It, it's, it's so it's so cool that you said that like you were kind of making two people like one person like i never yeah. thought about that like and then l thinking about it you know after reading it i'm like oh shit yeah that's exactly what they were you know yeah like, that was going to be that was always going to be the arc for both brothers they start out together and they make up one person together they're both kind of broken in their own ways but right. also capable in their own way and then when and then they're separated right spoilers sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> In the story, they are separated for a bit and they both start to take on qualities more like the other brother and become more whole on their own. Right. And then by the end, they come together again and are more complete. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're, again, all your all your stories, they have that 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 the, that character arc. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They have that beginning. And by the end of the story, the story has irreparably changed them into the character that they are now, which is, yeah. which is w one of the things I love about you. I love about your work so much. Um, oh, thanks, man. I, I have to, I, I know I had this written down. I, I need to ask because um, I'm curious if you've been asked, but I'm sure you have, but like music, it, it plays a big part in like warlords Mm -hmm. uh, you had, you know, there was a song like in every issue, I think, of Warlords. Yeah. Uh, and now with the Last God, which we're going to get to, because there's a lot to talk about the Last God, <laughs> a <laughs> lot <laughs> to talk about with the Last God. Um, so like, where? I mean, I, obviously, I know you're a musician, uh, but where does that come from? Like, were you always a musician? Did you find it in high school? Were you when you were you young when you started playing? But why did you think to transition? Because I'll be honest. Uh, I've been reading comics 30 years or better. I really don't, I can't think of many comics that use music in any kind of way. Yeah, it's true. I, um, it's something I always wanted to see in a book. And I, I, um, I answer your early question. I, I started playing trumpet and piano when I was real little, like four, probably four years old for piano and five for trumpet or something Oh wow! or a cornet really, which is like a trumpet, but like smaller, it's just wound differently. Uh huh. Um, I had a grandpa who played very seriously. And when he got sick, he gave me all his old gear and, uh, taught me how to play it. I was still real young and, uh, taught me how to read music and how to play. And so I've been playing since I was, you know, since before kindergarten. Um, but it was always just kind of a toy until high school. That's when I started taking it seriously. Um, and you know, I love to perform. I still perform and that's, that's my day gig and I still love it. Right. Um, but as I've gotten older, that, focus has shifted from my love of performing to my love of, of writing music. Like I like, I like to perform music that I've written. Um, and that's really where I get my, when I get, where I get most satisfaction these days as a performer is when I'm playing stuff I wrote for my, for the ensemble I'm with. Sure. Um, and it's been really fun to join mediums, you know, to um, when I was doing Warlord, I, there's a lot of me in Warlords. I put a lot of myself in that book. And including Kentucky, which I, you know, yeah. I wanted that book to be kind of a love letter to Kentucky. Yeah. Um, so I did. And, and part of that is I, I just wanted it to be, I, wanted, I was making this alternate reality of Kentucky. It takes place after the second American Civil War and Kentucky's become this occupied nation within U.S. borders. And um, I, I wanted it to feel like, you know, familiar, but also super different. And that's why you see things like little things like, the different American flag that you see yeah, and the little, if you, if you have the single issues, those, those begin with little um, uh, like quotes from political statements or from sacred documents. Like there's the, the book of Luther, which is, um, you know, like another book of the Bible that the waterborne create. Yes. Um, there are those little things that help make the world feel more different, but also more complete and the music in the back, like the, the uh, 
the issue, the, uh, sorry, get my wires crossed here. The um, mountain music that I wrote to, to give you kind of get you in the the vibe of the story, like where it takes place, but also yeah. the lyrics have little clues to how the world got to be this way. Yes. Um, so the, all that world building, like the, the bits of scripture you see written on walls and the, the quotes that people say to each other that are like their vernacular that we don't have in this world and right. the way the cross looks different when you see it. All those things just help make the world feel familiar, but not quite right. Um, so that was, music was just a way that I could do that, that I knew that most people aren't really doing. So it's a, it's a way for me to set myself apart as a writer. Um, and I thought it was a, it was something that some people might, you know, be able to appreciate. Yeah. It's it, like I said, it's, uh, I am always in awe of musicians just because like, I, I don't have that. I don't have that brain activity. Like I, there's, I can't play an instrument to, I think to read music is, uh, I think learning Latin or reading Latin or, or some kind of, uh, hieroglyphic on a, on a cave wall would be easier than, than, than reading music and more or less writing music. Um, so I'm always fascinated by that. And that was always something that stuck out to me in your books. And, um, <clears throat> I substitute teach them off day. So I was at school and I was in a playing period when I was reading the last God and when they were going through the streets, uh, I guess like more, more like, um, I guess like the peasants, uh, mm. when the gladiators, uh, you know, when all, all hell breaks loose at the end, you know, mm. not really a spoiler, but you, you guys, you guys know you've read it. You know how much I've talked about that book. Uh, they're kind of singing that song, you know, and then you at the end, at the end of the book for you guys that don't know and, and for people listening at home at the end of the, of the comic, he has these, these, uh, sub stories, like that add to the lore. And we're going to get to last God here in a minute, but uh, it's it, one of them is about the song. And I'm like, damn, here he goes again, man. I've got, I've got to ask him about this. Like the, the music does it. The music is another character of this story. And when you talk about world building, uh, you know, like, you know, some people create a language, uh, which you kind of do in this also uh, in last God, uh, but also with music and, you know, R.R. R. Martin has, you know, I think we've all kind of seen that with him. Right. He's created everything from, you know, vernacular right. to, to, to music. And you do the same thing. Um, now, with The Last God, I had to ask you this, man, because I've read it like three times. And where did you <laughs> where did you come up with these names? Uh, which names? All of them. <laughs> I mean, from the name of the of the world we're in to uh -huh. now, like Tear. I know, like I assume Tear is a play off the God of War. Is that correct? Yeah. It's, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tear is. I mean, it's. Uh, well, that's where I first heard the name. I just basically went through, um, old like mythologies from different cultures, and and also like dead languages that okay. aren't used anymore. And um, just try to find things that all look cool and distinct, but also different from one another. Okay. So I found the names of, uh, like, there's, so, uh, again, people haven't read the book. There's, uh, <clears throat> there are familiar races in this world that look, that look familiar. Like, you'll see, oh, okay, these are the elves or these are the dwarves or whatever. Right. But they're all a little bit different and none of them are quite what you expect. Um, the The elves are not pretty shiny, happy, immortal elves like we see in other stories. Uh, like we usually, we usually see elves as being superior to us, right? And immortal usually, or extremely long lived and just kind of have it figured out in a way that humans don't. And in this, they are, there are aspects of that where they, they control magic and humans don't have magic. Right. But they're also a subjugated Aboriginal race. Like they're the original, the original people of this continent. The, are they they're the grass eaters correct yeah they call yeah grass eater is a is a derogatory term for for right. the elven yeah so where where does that come from like why why are they grass eaters they call them that it's yeah it's like a I don't super want you to spoil rude. anything but i'm just no it's fine it's, okay. it's a super rude word for for an elva um and uh it comes from initial like when when humans first met the el the elva they they claimed they came back with stories that oh they 
they burn their dead and dance in the flames and like they do burn their dead but that to the northmen that was like not done it was like what the hell are these savages doing they they burn their dead and dance in the flames they um they screw animals they 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 eat grass like cows they blah blah, blah. they all these stories they eat dung uh right. paint themselves in it and a lot of it was not true but that was uh, just an early misconception of the elva where that they were like basically animals that looked like men is what they thought they were okay and so the term grass eaters is sort of stuck yeah there's a there's a, actually a scene uh where you get that um when the gladiator who's won his 60 matches and should get his freedom the uh but he hasn't killed anybody which i that is so cool like it's just little shit that you do in books uh that i, I really enjoy and that's really cool like a gladiator that has won 60 matches but he hasn't killed anybody and when he's asked by the elf, that's kind of like, um, I assume this elf is kind of like a general in this army, I assume. Not really. He's a, he's so beside the, the queen. Uh, so I figured. Say it again. Was, I'm sorry. He was beside the queen. Right. So that, that's supposed to be, it was supposed to be um, a celebration of the, like a 30th anniversary of the great victory of the the heroes, the right. fellowship. Right. Um, but a lot of those guys didn't show up. And so they sent stand-ins. Ah. And, Baco Al Moon, the ferryman king, who's the leader of the Elva, did not come. She sent her son, who's that guy. Okay. So that's Valko. Valko, yes, Valko. Yeah. So yeah, when Valko says, "Why didn't you kill these those people?" and he was like, "Just figured it was harder not to," you know, basically like it was easy. It'd been easy to kill him, but I didn't. You know, like I was challenging myself in this sixty matches. Like, hey, I could have killed any of them if I wanted to. And then he's, he, I, he he makes a remark, the the Valko does, and then the the gladiator says, like, uh, raise your sword to me and I'll show you, Grass yeah. here. And yeah, I was like. Valko says something like. Oh, shit. Like, why don't you kill anybody? It's like, is a, is a, human, is a human slave worth anything? Like, That's why do you bother? And then uh, Evander's like, draw your sword and I'll show you what a slave's life is worth. Like, dude, it's come it's at a, me, bro. Yeah, dude, it's an awesome scene. I mean, like, and there's a bunch of them in this in in this book. Uh, and, and I tell my guy, I tell all my my listeners all the time, like, you know, that's what makes comics really really cool. Is like when you when you're turning the pages, and and, and again, um, oh, hell, I got his name wrote down because I, I had to give this guy mad props. I'm not familiar with his work, but I'm a big uh, Asad Rabik fan. And this guy is very, very similar to Assad. And it's uh, Ricardo Federici. Is that correct? Yes. Nailed it. Okay. Uh, this dude is a badass. And as you can see from that <laughs> cover uh, that, that's, that's, that's going to the side there, when you see the last guy, that's his cover. And there's actually two covers that I've got yeah. uh, in that slideshow. This dude is awesome, man. I mean, he yeah, captures he this world. His action scenes are fantastic. Uh, I mean, how, let me. How did you did were, did did DC put you two guys together, or were you familiar with his work? How did that happen? Yeah, our our editor get him uh, got him. He's wow. so my um. You back up a little. So I did the Aquaman annual a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Aquaman annual number one, and uh, at that same time. Ricardo was drawing the monthly book for Aquaman. And that was his first DC work. And my editor on that annual was, well, I, I had several, but like the, the assistant editor who I was most in contact with on that annual was a guy named Amadeo Torturo. Right. And Amadeo is a colossal D and D fan. He like, he's a huge tabletop gamer when he's not doing comics. He's doing that. That's like one of his passions. Okay. Um, and he, started doing editing different kinds of work. Like he did some stuff at vertigo not long after that. And he came he approached me and he was like, would you want to do a horror story set in a high fantasy world? I was like, hell yes, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would be all over that. Cause I mean, I, I love working with boom, but I, but they wanted to keep all my stuff like as a newish writer, well, a brand new writer for last sons, they wanted to keep my stuff like, they want to put a mature rating thing on it because that would have limited the, the audience a little bit. They want to, you know, help me get out there. So I hadn't really been cut loose for horror yet. And I right. would, but I love horror stuff. I have a horror web comic that's on my site still, but 
I wanted to do something, you know, something harder that was going to get printed. So I was like, Oh my God, just let me at it. And I, I did it. And he was like, let's see if we can get Ricardo. When he got the pitch, he was like, dude, we got to see if we can get Ricardo for this. I'm like, dude, can we get Ricardo? He's a friggin' the best Rockstar. dude in the world for this book. I'd never thought we could get him. Cause by that time, by the time it actually, that pitch came out, um, he had already done, he did, um, he did a big cover thing that shows the dark nights from metal in there. Yeah. This super iconic shot of all those guys. And he also did the, uh, the murder machine issue. The one about the cyborg Batman. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, did that he, one. I think Tynan, I think James Tynan wrote it. Yeah, he did. Okay. Oh, damn it. I, I, I do know him now. Okay. I knew it looked familiar to me, but I'm like, I think he's, he's gotten better. Oh my God. Yeah, he's I mean, a maniac. He's so good. Um, yeah, when I found out we get Ricardo, I'm like, dude, do anything you can. Do. <laughs> right. He's like the man. And he said yes, dude. And his, I mean, you see how good he is. His, his not just his, I mean, his um, his anatomy is amazing. Yes. But his technique in general, like all the faces look so distinct. You can see just like this much of anyone's face on any, like any from any angle, any size, and be able to tell immediately who it is. Like everyone looks different, but super consistent with each, with themselves, you know? Right. Um, and his instincts for horror are incredible. Yes. Like that, that page, that body horror page next to the megalith where you see those guys getting ripped up. Yes. Just, God, so good. I, I, so, so wait me, till you see the character designs coming, man. Like the monsters that are coming in future issues, he is just destroying it. Really? Yeah. Oh man. I, so I got, I need to ask you about that because I have that wrote down as well. Um, the big bad, um, the, the flowers, the plague of flowers. Yeah. Plague so the of flowers. Where did you get the idea for that thing? That thing is horrific. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it all comes from the God and the void, Mal Ultep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the God in the void, um, without getting too spoilery, he just, he wants to destroy all that is. Okay. It's, like he's, he is the void that surrounds creation and the void regards creation as theft. The creation never should have existed. It's all supposed to be void forever. And so there's just been this thing watching the world from the darkness, just like hungry and pissed. And his, it's uh, eventually takes form into Maultep who, you know, sets the supernatural plague loose on the world. And that is the plague of flowers. It's not just, dead bodies it combines dead bodies and plant life and rot and ash and you know smoke and fire and like it just makes this this organic undead awfulness that just wants to destroy everything that exists yeah, um it's so badass i know he's killing it dude it's <laughs> it's uh it was inspired the design was inspired in part by the necromorphs from the game dead space Okay. Yeah. You know that, you know, those things game. Yeah. Yeah. That's an awesome game. Um, I love the way they like recombine dead bodies in creepy ways and they're not just zombies, right? They, right. they kind of take their own shape. Um, and the, the cordyceps critters from the last of us, another game, um, right. they, they call them clickers in the game. Like these, these things where um, there's a real life fungus that, um, it invades the mind of insect that can, if it's, if it inhabits the mind of an insect, it can like force it to like do things it doesn't want to do. Like it can make it just make a, a cricket stand on top of a leaf where a bird will get it in hopes that the bird will get it and then also be infected or spread it, you know? Wow. So the game last of us kind of took that premise, like, well, what if that could happen to humans? And so this, this creepy fungus thing gets inside of people basically makes us zombies essentially. Right. Um, where, but you know, more like la more like uh, 20 days later, we're like the fast running kind of zombie. Yeah. We're like, we're, we're infected with this awful thing. But the longer those creatures are infected, it grows out from the brain and actually busts through the skull and makes them look even like more horrifying. And uh, it's a super gross, but really awesome. And um, I was inspired by those, by those things. But uh, Ricardo didn't need the direction. Like I, I kind of described what I was thinking as far as, plant life merging with dead bodies, merging with all these like vines and all these other things sure. that I wanted every individual monster to be different. Like these are not zombies, they're their own thing and everyone's different. Um, 
and he just ran with that concept and made this horrifying thing that we're seeing now. Yeah, it is. It really is. And it's, it's so, it's so different yeah. than, than something that you've seen before. Yeah, uh, totally. Where does this, where does this horror uh, love for horror come from? God, I don't know. My child of divorce. Don't judge me. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's uh, I just love horseshit, man. I don't know. Yeah. No, it's cool. I do too. Yeah. I mean, it's but but again, and and I did this on on the last report. Uh, it was kind of like a Halloween episode, and uh, there there's a big there's a big push right now in comics for horror. Uh, Gideon Falls, uh, Something's Killing the Children. If you haven't, I don't know if you're familiar with those two titles. If you like horror, these two comics are your books. Like, they are, in, and I love horror movies. That's the only kind of movie I can sit down and watch with my wife. It's all <laughs> she'll watch. Really? Uh, oh, yes. yes. Wow, she, you're a lucky man. Yeah. Oh, dude. It, I know, like, uh, any any like it chapter two you know i knew that well, i could get her to the movies to see that i mean she That's she awesome. wants to go see that kind of stuff um but you know right now it's there's there's a lot of horror comic books coming out and it's a it's kind of a big th and they're good they're yeah. really really good which is you know kind of odd uh because sometimes the movie genre it, it can be hit or miss with with horror when it comes to a movie Sure, uh, but the comics are killing it right now. So I think last the last God is is really come out at a great time. And like you said, mixing this this fantasy horror, it's something we haven't seen yet. Again, you're doing it again with giving us something comic fans we haven't seen. Uh, guys, you got to check out the last God. It's oh man, it's fucking great. I love it. It's fantastic. And I always tell you guys the number one issue, uh, number one issue of anything should grab you comics ain't cheap anymore so you know unlike a novelist who has a thousand words to, to get his point across to get his story across um you uh, a comic writer has uh, 20 odd pages to grab somebody and say hey man give me your four dollars next month uh i'm gonna tell you a fucking great story and you're gonna be glad you gave me that four bucks and with the last god you get fantastic illustration you get a great story you get uh more lore then then you 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 can handle i guarantee it. if you're an rr martin fan you're gonna fucking love this lore you're gonna dive into these these short stories he gives you even at the end of the comic book so i'm loving 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 the last god so i'm gonna transition again into something that i i, I read this and i'll be honest i didn't even know you had written it and when i shut the cover this this i swear to god when I shut the cover, because you had two issues come out last week, correct? I did, yeah. Yeah, you had two. The Last Guy, which I read, and then I read Marvel Zombies Resurrection. And I read it, and I was like, holy shit. That was really good. Especially <laughs> with the surfer at the end. And then I'm like, you know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody because I want you guys to read it. But I'm like holy shit this was so good i shut the cover and i almost shit my pants when i seen your name on the cover i i tweeted you and i was like you motherfucker you did it again like you nailed it twice this week man that Thank is a you. that's a great dude that is a fantastic story especially you had to re kind of rehash something that's already been done so you still have to make it original enough to get people to want to read it and buy it. Right. So it's, a, it's this weird thing to, it's this weird uh, line to dance, right? Where you got people who you don't want to let down because they already love a thing. Right. But um, yeah, you got to do something new. So I, I mean, I guess I didn't have to, but I, the original was cool, but it was like kind of campy and it was, you know, tongue in cheek and it's just zombie Spider-Man eating zombie, whoever, or then right. they're, and trying to find a human to eat and isn't really nobody's death really meant anything it was all just kind of for fun exactly and yeah. um which is kind of not my speed like i yeah this is not that's the end of that sentence i guess <laughs> it's just kind of not my speed yeah no um, it, 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 but you do you do that and like you make it to where uh, in typical horror fashion it's like oh my god he's in the closet oh he's not in the closet you know and oh she's behind me I mean, that's the kind of shit you did in, in this. Like, 
as I'm turning the page, I'm not expecting what's coming next. And what you did was just to kind of set this up. Uh, Reed Richards gets a uh, a message from Carol Danvers, uh, Captain Marvel, that something is not quite right with Galactus. So Reed gathers uh, some heavy hitters. Okay, because we're talking about Galactus, guys. Okay, you can't take the B team. You can't take the C squad. You got to take the A team. He takes the A team up to investigate. So then they find out that Galactus is actually dead. And what they find inside Galactus is what makes all hell break loose. Now, I don't want to spoil that for you. But what happens inside Galactus, you're not going to see it coming. And that's what was so cool. And some of the characters that you used, I was even kind of like, oh, damn. But this is what I got to ask you. Now, if it's a spoiler, don't don't tell me because I, I don't like being spoiled. Should we know what Wolverine's talking about? Because Wolverine knows who this is, correct? Yes. And the reason you're not saying it anymore is because it is spoilery. Wolverine, okay. <laughs> Wolverine should we, knows. Should we know? You, you could know. Okay, fair enough. We could know. It is okay. conceivable you could know. Okay. Okay, yeah, good. Wolverine Wolverine knows for sure. So when we do find out, we're going to be like, oh, shit. Like, that's I hope bad. so. Okay, yeah, good. I, I mean, the clues are there. I'll say that. The clues are there, but I don't yeah. want it to be so obvious. It's like, well, obviously, it's this thing. So it's I'm, I've kind of reorganized I reorganized um, ideas from Marvel past and sure. put them together into a new thing. So when it comes together, I think it'll be exciting for readers because it's it's pieces that you recognize, like, oh shit, I could have figured it out myself. Because those are always the best reveals to me. Always. When, when you find out and it's like, oh my God, I could like all those clues were there. I could have known. known that. Yeah, that's um, you know, and I'm not one of these people like they go I go to movies or read a book and try to figure the ending out. You know, I kind of know which way it's going. And I'm kind of like, and when it does go that way, I'm super disappointed, right? Because I figured it yeah. out. Like, dude, right. I don't, you know, trip me up a little bit along the way. I want to be tripped up along the way. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I never didn't even, Marvel Zombies would have never went in my pool list. And after I read that first issue, I'm like, holy shit. I've, I've got I've to see the end of the story. So, man, you nailed it twice this week, man. So, so Thanks, congratulations to that. It. You've really I'm hit- really excited. The, uh, this this issue is a one shot that it's not really one shot. It's it's like a setup issue for the mini series that's coming next spring. So just know that it's good. It's setting up like a four issue mini that's coming very soon. Are you doing it? I am. <laughs> yes, awesome yeah. man. And I'm you- I'm even more excited for you to see the next one. Like it's it's because uh, it leads right into what's coming next, and then you get to see how things have changed and what. Oh God, it's just so fun to write, man. Like it's, oh, I bet. It's one of the most fun comics I've written. Um, and Marvel is just like cutting me loose. Like I have gotten so little feedback on the stuff. They're just like, yeah, we love it. Go, go, go. It's awesome. Like they've, I mean, not, I mean, I love notes. I love take, I love getting good notes from editors. Sure. sure. But uh, so far they've just been like egging me on and letting me do whatever. And it's Keep been doing what awesome. you're doing, right? Part of that is probably because it's like alternate reality. Because I mean, no one really believes that we're actually mowing down the entire Marvel universe. So it's sure. like this alternate thing, and that's probably what's giving me a little more leeway than it would be if I was doing a continuity book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, they're digging it and they're letting me do whatever, and it's been a blast to work on. Oh man, and you, and you can tell. I mean, it's a blast to read. And like I said, this is a book that I don't even know why I read it. I think I'd read everything that week, and I was looking for something else. I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. And I read it, and then I'm telling you, man, uh, my jaw hit the ground when I seen your name on it. I'm like, oh my god! Like, yes, man, you, man, you, you're, you're killing it right now. Um, Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Well, I mean, and and like I said, I'm a fan, and I like, I love stories, and that's, I think that's one of the reasons I love the genre as much as I do. Uh, and and you know, comics went through kind of a bad phase. Um, where there just there wasn't a lot of good stories, and I kind of feel like now, with like guys like you, Donny Cates, Ryan Stegman, uh, you know, from the artist side, like you, we've got we've got so much young good talent, 
uh, that are really coming out with some really, really good stuff. Um, so I, I'm, I, I tell, I tell my listeners all the time. I'm just, it's, this is a, I feel like this is the new golden era of, of comics and, and comic writing just because like I said, I've not stopped reading comics and you know, not a lot of times have I went to the comic shop and been excited because I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. Spider-Man. Oh, another civil war. That's cool. Uh, you know, but like Jason Aaron got me, got me excited again. You know, now Donnie Cates and Zardaski, these guys are, are doing really, really, really high level stuff. And, and I've always yeah. liked your stuff. And now you're getting to branch out. And like you said, like turn me loose, man. I've never got to do horror and you can see your enthusiasm in the pages. So, uh, so yeah, man, it's, it's, it's very, 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 very cool. Uh, I wanted to say one of the guys in the chat, Jason said, uh, and I said this a minute ago, or I wanted to say this a minute ago, play with your 10 swords. I wrote that line down when I read the issue, like, you know, it's like, Oh, I love that. You know, Jason's a writer himself. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm all right. Well, I'm flattered, man. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh yeah, he's, yeah, he's a writer as well. Big comic fan. And, uh, he said, uh, which my listeners have had a love hate relationship with the black label so far. And uh, he even says might single handedly save the black label for DC. So, uh, hey, well, shucks. that's yeah. awesome. Man. That's high praise. Yeah, very, very high praise, especially from Jason, because Jason doesn't give anybody any praise at all, ever. <laughs> so, you, you should count yourself very, very wow. fortunate. Hats off to you, Jason. Thanks. <laughs> but, hey, uh, Phil, I don't want to keep you any longer than I have. I, I have a ton of other questions. We're just going to have to do a part two, man. <laughs> we'll do it. Slam that one more for me at least. Okay, one more. I got one more. I got to make it a good one. I got to make it a good one. It's going to make it a good one. Okay. Anything from the chat room? Anyone want to hear anything? Questions out there? Jay, uh, Brian. I know Brian. Brian, you said you had questions for him. I haven't even seen Brian get in the chat. My show is usually a weekday show. I think a lot of my my listeners are out partying right now. I think right on. Yeah, it's yeah right. It's weekend. It's well, weekend, hey man, Saturday. It's, uh, if we don't get anything new, um, okay. Well, look, I did had some rapid. I did this with Peter David at Dragon Con. Oh shit! Uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Peter was great. Peter was great. Uh, it started off rough, <laughs> but okay. we we got we got it going going pretty well actually. Uh, so I had these rapid fire questions for Peter and Peter did not comprehend the idea of rapid fire. You know, like he's sitting there and he's mulling. I'm like, Peter, Mr. David, you, come on, man. It's, it's an hour show, dude. Come on. Rapid fire. So kind of the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. And okay. We'll, we'll start, we'll start with some simple shit and then we'll kind of get more comic related stuff. And I've only got like, there's like 10. Okay. Okay. They're, they're quick. All right. All right. So, favorite movie? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> no, it's easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, nice one. Uh, oh, you know what? The Witch. The Witch. Oh, okay. Good one. That's a better one. Uh, three words describe yourself. Oh God. Uh, First things. Busy, sleepy, uh, <laughs> hardworking. That there you go. Like a jerk. No, I think uh, no, I think it sounds <laughs> exactly right. Uh, if you weren't writing comics, what would you want to do for a living other than your uh, playing playing a trumpet for the other than what I actually do for a living? Um, God, other than writing comics, uh, writing prose, I guess. Really, like poetry? Yeah. Uh, prose, no, like novels. Novels. Okay, gotcha. Okay, um, if you could have three dead people for dinner, who would they be? For dinner, as and I'm eating them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you horror writer. No, not you're not eating these people. I guess you right, could. Right, right. I don't know. All right, three. Okay, so I have no over dinner. So, um, Jesus Christ, uh, Abraham Lincoln, um, go. Jim Henson, Jim Henson, good one. Uh, Charles Mingus. He's a wow. jazz composer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now oh, those are that's good. Those are good ones. Favorite TV show? <sighs> Shit, uh, Breaking Bad. Good one. Uh, best advice you ever got. I saw a, a quote um, from Neil Gaiman. I'm sorry to slow this down. No, um, no, no, for, no. Neil Gaiman um, did a, gave a commencement speech at a school and he talked about, he, um, 
he saw his future as a writer, like the career that he wanted, he regarded that as like the mountain, like air quotes, the mountain that he was pursuing. And um, he like every, basically every decision he made was based on whether it took him closer to or further away from that mountain. Like even if, if he got like a, an a offer, like a lucrative offer to be a writer, but it wasn't the kind of thing that would help him like a journalist gig for a newspaper or whatever. Yeah. Something that would have made money for him while he was starving that would have been helpful at the time. If it didn't get him closer to that mountain, he would say no. And so he, he was had a singular focus on the thing that he wanted. And um, he, even if, he had a really great opportunity that did not serve that goal. He would say no. Wow. Is that, is, have you kind of ad- adopted that philosophy, I guess? Yeah, I live, I live by that straight up. Wow. Um, okay. And it, it's, uh, he talks about, he wanted to write not just comics, but also kids books and novels and, you know, Dr. Who and screenplays and sure. whatever the fuck he wanted to do, you know? Right. Right. And, um, and now he's totally that guy. And it's, it's because of that. So, um, and I, I, I really admire that. I don't want to be just the guy who writes a certain kind of comic book yeah, or the writes comics at, at all in general. Like I wanted to, I want to also do, you know, kids, books. I'm writing music too. I also want to write, you know, kids books and novels and screenplays. Sure. Sure. So I, um, that's, that's it. Yeah. Well, as, as far as your career goes right now, I can definitely say you are not writing one type of comic book. You are, and that, that, that's what makes me such a fan in, in, and Jason is even saying Neil Gaiman is a god in our household. So like, oh, yeah, nice. you you've got a fan in Jason tonight. I can already tell. Nice. Uh, and he also said Last God is due to be a major television show. Otherwise, he could be rocking a serious set of fantasy novels. Uh, no. Which I agree totally. Uh, and we're one issue. It's one issue, guys. I mean, you know. So we're really looking forward to that. Uh, so now I now I got some comic rapid fire. Just okay. you know. Just for the fans. Um, favorite comic all time. All time? Hellboy, all time. I guess. Well, you know, oh God, Hellboy or Hellblazer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. Those are, yeah, that's a great one. What superpower would you have? The answer to the ability to know the answer to any question. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, uh, like Orion in the chair of knowledge from D.C. Yes. Like when he sits in the chair, he knows everything. Golly, right. that's a good one. I already thought of that one. Uh, Batman or Cap? Oh, God, man, like what? That's not. I can't. I can't choose those guys. Hey, right, man, you got Cap. to give me Cap. Yep. 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 Me too. Those are my one and two. And if I'm pushed to shove, I gotta. I, I gotta go Cap. If you could work with one artist, living dead, who would it be? Ricardo Federici. <laughs> yeah. He's the shit, man. He is. I mean, I can't, I can't follow you there. If I got to pick somebody who I'm not actually working with. Yeah. 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 Then, Let's do uh, that. James Heron. Wow. Yeah. That dude's a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he is. He's yeah. He's, he is fantastic. He was actually at a con. He was at dragon con a few years ago and mm-hmm. I didn't get to see him. And I was so bummed out that I didn't get him to, to sign something. He's a super nice guy. Super kind of a quiet guy. He's just like, is really, he, as I recall, I don't think he drinks. He's just kind of a, just a chill dude. Just chills out. Yeah. yeah that's, he's a good guy though. Fantastic, man. He's, he's fantastic. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek. I think I know the answer to this. Star Wars. Easy. <laughs> easy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's easy. Um, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, okay. <laughs> John Snow, you're a Game of Thrones fan, obviously, right? Yeah. Okay. Me too. Big, big Thrones fan. So John Snow or Daenerys? John Snow all day. All day. Me too. Now you don't have to answer this one, but DC or Marvel, you can only work for one. Uh, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Trap. No, I, <laughs> dude, I even said, don't make him answer that one. Yeah. I even wrote that down. No, you don't have to. It's uh, a trap. What's that? It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> Guys, if you're listening to this on iTunes or Anchor, uh, please check out the live stream. Please, please check this guy's workout. I mean, it's it's fantastic. Um, it, it's it's. You know, I like different kinds of things, like different kinds of comic books. 
This guy gives you a different story all the time. And even if it's a Marvel comic book or DC comic book, you're going to get something very, very new and fresh if Philip Kennedy Johnson's name is on that cover. I promise you that. Philip, thank you so much for being on. Um, I like to sign off by saying uh, the world's a crazy place. If people just treat people like you would want to be treated, be much better with Veterans Day on Monday. That would be a great opportunity to tell a veteran that you appreciate their service. Sir, I want to say thank you so much for your service again. Uh, and, and, dude, thank you so much for being on the report, man. Dude, it's my pleasure, man. Let's do it again. Yes, like, yes, we'll absolutely. And if you're going to be in the Louisville area, I know I know I got a bunch of locals that watch the show as well. Uh, November 30th. Uh, what time are you going to be at the Great Escape, Phil? Shoot. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we're going to talk those details when we get a little closer. But, I mean, you can probably just call down there and they'll tell you. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be advertising it. I'll be – you can follow me on social media as well. I'm on um, Facebook and Insta- like Facebook under my full name. Twitter under Philip K. Johnson. It's Philip two L's. I'm on Instagram with Philip underscore Kennedy underscore Johnson. And I will definitely be talking about that signing. So if you're in Louisville, come out and see me November 30th at the great escape. That place rocks. Yeah. Uh, uh, Phil or, uh, Debo is, I call him my, my hype, my hype man. Uh, He's fantastic. He 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 got in the, he got in the uh, the show a little late, but he has already put your social uh, media links on on in the chat. Oh, wow. So dude, thank so, you. Yeah, that dude. He's awesome. So you guys click those links. Give Philip a follow. That way you can stay uh, abreast of what he's doing and keep watching the Blazing Defender Report, of course, because I'm sure whenever whenever Philip has something come out, I'm going to be talking about it. Philip, thank you again so much for being on, guy. Uh, being on, um, we're definitely, definitely going to do something when you come in town. Um, awesome, man. Yeah, maybe I can get. Thanks uh, so much for having me, dude. It was, it was a real pleasure, and we'll do it again for sure. Absolutely. All right, guys, have a have a very safe weekend. And if you know somebody that you think might like the show, send them a link. Uh, let them let them figure out for themselves if they they would like to show if you haven't hit that follow button please do that way you get a notification every time i go live all right guys for philip kennedy johnson the blazing defender we're out of here peace thank you guys